guys. Welcome to another Jagged Alliance free dev stream live from the Heavy Mode Games uh, live stream studio here in Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, we got a great show for you tonight. Uh, I'm Pavel. I'm going to be one of your hosts from the side of Heavy Mode. I'm a producer on Jagged Alliance free. My colleague Lubo. I'm a game designer on the project. Uh, hi, guys. You know me from the Devs Play streams. And our guest tonight is none other than Joros Trezov or Georgi mm -hmm. Trezov, who is our composer of Jagged Alliance. And he mm -hmm. has a quite extensive history with the studio yeah. that we're gonna tell you a little bit more uh, later on. And as always, we will start a little bit with uh, updates on what happened last week. So last week uh, I joined Lubo on the Devs Play um, where we talked a little bit more about motion capture. I made a fool of myself wearing the <laughs> the suit that we used for, for the motion capture uh, that we did in the game. And we talked about a lot of different uh, topics like, we didn't manage to focus it on motion capture at all. So we got to answer a lot of the stuff and progress the campaign of the Happy Little Accidents playthrough. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, t today after uh, the interview, we can continue with the playthrough. And uh, today, Pavel is going to join Lubo, who will answer some of your more uh, tricky build questions, as I think that he's one of the most competent people regarding yeah. uh, builds in the game. So stay tuned for that a, a little bit later on. And uh, without further ado, we need to talk about what's coming up tomorrow because we haven't announced it yet, but uh, 1.30, the patch codename Vicky that is going to introduce Bobby Ray's online store is going to launch tomorrow at, I think, four o'clock uh, Bulgarian time, which is GMT plus two. Um, that should be 3 o'clock Vienna time, so stay tuned for that. You're going to have uh, a lot of fun, I think, with, uh, with um, the introduction of Bobby Ray's store. And we're happy to say that even modders have gotten their hands on it a little bit earlier and hopefully managed to adapt all of their mods, <coughs> especially the ones that introduce new weapons, new items in the game so that you can actually you know, use them and have uh, a lot more variety in how you want to approach situations. Uh, regarding uh, what's next for the week, tomorrow we have the launch of behind the scenes uh, trailer for the music <laughs> and how he did the music, how Jorah did the music uh, actually for, mm. for Jagged Alliance. And also we have an extra Friday stream where we're going to uh, have jo uh, Jonathan Ferguson from the British Royal Armories join us and talk about guns. And a new thing, since we're launching 1.30 tomorrow, we will also follow up after the interview with Jonathan with an extra hour of actually talking about the patch and what's new and what can you expect more. So keep your questions. We're going to want to answer those. Uh, uh, and today we want to talk a little bit more about the music. Um, what else tomorrow, not tomorrow, next week uh, is the launch of the console versions. I uh, hope that uh, some of you are excited about that. And, you know, it, it gives a very different sense of how you play Jagged Alliance, especially from a, a wider screen from afar. So stay tuned and try out that if, uh, if that's something that's, you know, in your taste. And I think I'm not missing anything else. All right, All right. Cool. cool. So let's let's jump into our main guests, the star of tonight's show. <laughs> <Stop>. uh, yeah, <laughs> Georgi Strezov, you are uh, George Strezov. How do you want to? George. George, George yeah. yeah. So. Um, it's quite interesting that <laughs> Call me whatever been... you like. <laughs> <laughs> Without honey. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so. I'm I'm actually new to the studio because I've been only with uh, with the studio for the past one, two projects, you know, the Strand mm -hmm. Alien Dawn and the Jagged Alliance project uh, that we're working on together. But you've actually been part of the uh, production of four games, like uh, going all the way back to Victor Vrand and surviving yeah. Mars, and um, it's actually something of a um, long-term relationship with the studio. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, Tell considering us how it started, considering yeah. that each game was developed for like three, four years. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So how did it all started? Like, uh, okay, well, it was because um, I have a more of an experience in in film scores. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I've I've worked uh, for like sixteen now years, even more, uh, on TV and film projects here in, in mm. Bulgaria. And one one day, my my good friend Lubo, who is 
uh, the sound designer the other, here, the other yeah, Lou the, the that's other behind Lou. the camera yeah <clears throat> called me and said uh, you know what um, we are developing this game this new game and this time we're going to need like a composer because as far as I know like the previous one uh, which was Omerta before that yeah uh, was with with stock music mm -hmm. so and um, so he, he called me and said do you want to uh, you know maybe write something for, for this mm. and I was like yeah I, I love games I've never done anything for games up, yeah. to the, up to that point apart from some small like uh, mobile games so I came in and uh, I met the team here they showed me some concept art we talked about you know the, the game which at that point was called mm -hmm. freelance vampire vampire hunter yeah <laughs> so, working was, titles are really fun here yeah. uh, <laughs> so I went back to my studio and wrote some um, like a track which mm -hmm. later on kind of became part of the, of the soundtrack and kind of the rest is history yeah yeah actually the, when I started working here I've never thought I've never given much thought about music like yeah. I always thought that you just go on a bank and just buy whatever <laughs> sure. is available because hey no one's gonna it, you don't have that specific skill set of people lying, lying around, you know, mm. to make music specifically for your project. And then uh, someone showed me the Archdemon video uh, that uh, was for Victor Vrans, yes. uh, which is, you know, a combination of the gameplay and actually the the, um, uh, the orchestra. Yeah, the like behind the scenes, scenes orchestra yeah. recording. And I was like, yeah. wait, <laughs> this was done for, for the actual yeah. game. Yeah, and they were like, yeah, wh where was this done? Mm -hmm. Like... Like here in Krasnopolana, you know, this is a, a yes, region of Sofia. A very <laughs> shady <was> <laughs> neighborhood. Yes. Crimson Fields, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Crimson Fields, <laughs> like you yeah. said. <laughs> Crimson Fields, and I was like, yeah. you're kidding. Yeah. I was like, no, 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 this guy's <laughs> really good. And I was like, yeah, it, it sounds really good, but go on, Krasnopolana, which was, you know, a, a wake up in a way that's like, there are actual people that uh, do video game music and like in a very non-generic way like it, it's it's project by project and it's uh, it's a lot of thought given into it and That's uh, right. that yeah. was like the beginning uh, just the beginning of uh, Jagged like we were just starting out and we we're thinking where where it would go and uh, what kind of like motifs if that's the proper yeah. like the uh, the proper yeah, the musical yeah. Movies, yeah like what we were gonna use and I was like okay this this is gonna be interesting because yeah. it's like I've never seen anything like that. I would love to see how it how this yeah. works and how it goes on it was a quite a process though like, it was a very long process it, it yeah. took like two maybe three years mm -hmm. of um, first doing the demos yeah because we're doing the demos then um, you know we play them with the game mm -hmm. so to, to see if it works if it doesn't and afterwards, we go to record the mu the musicians mm -hmm. afterwards mm -hmm. because live music is, uh, I think, what gives, I would say, fifty percent more. Yeah. On top of the music, yeah, because some of those demos of the tracks <laughs> really sound weak and kind of uh, not very interesting. But when the, the the players, you know, put their, you know, mind and soul to it, it becomes completely different. Mm -hmm. Plus, when it's when it's a backdrop to actual things that you're doing in game, it's of course a totally yeah, yeah. different of experience. Yeah, yeah. But we were we were talking in the prep uh, for for the stream. We were talking that uh, if you would say the previous project that you worked on was like uh, Victor Van or Freelance Vampire Hunter <laughs> was uh, like, what would you say? Like that was the score of the music. Well, f first of all, I have to. Um, say that I approach every project that I do, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's a game or a film or something like this, um, by choosing a specific like instrumentation, yeah. musical language, mm -hmm. and musical theme. Sometimes some, I, I like themes, but sometimes some projects don't need themes, like mm -hmm. documentaries or like chamber drama films. For example, they want something more ambient, stuff like this. Uh, but in, uh, the most important thing for me is the the whole concept. Mm -hmm. So, and I, as I said in the prep talk, uh, it, before writing the music, the composer needs to become some sort of a like art director yeah. of, of the music. So you need to find the language, the instrumentation. So, for example, Victor Van was gothic, dark. The music is very dark. 
all the instruments are like church organ mm. choirs, really low bass choirs, uh, some Renaissance uh, instruments, mm. uh, ethnic, you know, instruments. It sounds heavy and yeah. Yeah, and and it's kind of uneasy mm -hmm. on some of the tracks. Then uh, you get surviving bars where it's more bright. You had this, especially at the beginning when I when I first started writing the music for Surviving Mars, it was very retro futuristic, mm -hmm. the, the whole visual style. So I decided to go into that um, old vintage like sound yeah. plus minimalism, like all those like repetitive, you know, patterns which are kind of symbolize all the robots and all the mechanical stuff that's happening. And then you get the orchestra, which is the humans as if they they go to the dome and then you get you know so and jagged alliance as well he had this a needed Wait, it always it always special. requires like uh what the client input is also because when i got into the project yeah. there was this uh <laughs> what would you what we what did we call it ripomatic uh video which was basically a mashup from like uh, action movies and yeah. very iconic scenes like you know the the scene from i don't know predator or something mm -hmm. uh and the whole uh sweatiness of the yeah. 80s 90s movies the guitars like rhyming yeah. all the way so that was like feeding up to the to the idea what was your initial thought when well, you saw all of that together yeah my first obviously i've played uh the, the second mm -hmm. second uh version of the game um and we had to kind of make an homage yeah. to it uh instrumentally also the marimba sound because very kind of um key element to, mm -hmm. to your soundtrack also the guitars and the basses um but also i w also wanted to make this not towards the like the scores of I don't know Michael Kamen, of all the Die Hard, Little yeah. Weapon, you know you get those do 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 you know these yeah. like the, these cliches of <laughs> you know action action music and on top of that was also the ethnic element to yeah. the whole thing because uh, what I think lacked in the in the previous uh, uh, game was just this like um, regional feel yeah. and. It actually wasn't present in, mm -hmm. in our music till kind of the, the last, because mm. we had the very orchestral score. That there were some elements here and there, like entering the village, for example, uh, with all the marimba solos and stuff. But it wasn't, you know, that yeah. regional. So I was like, we have to make something that really stands but, out. But that wasn't really uh, only with with the music. At some point, we, we chose that uh, the whole story is going to be in Africa and yeah. hot diamonds are going to be like the cornerstone of yep. the whole campaign. But up until um, fairly later on in, mm. in the development, like we were still looking for a visual style and then we figured out it's like staring us in the face. It's, yeah. it's the continent <laughs> yes. of Africa in terms yes. of its contrasts like... Uh, you have lush jungles and you have uh, really dry savannas mm -hmm. and you have a uh, specific sound that's associated with all of those environments and when when we actually uh like uh focused on that like we figured out that yeah this is what we want to yeah. do then you know all of the other things click like oh like we've been doing it but we haven't really been using it as a guide that's right so yeah, yeah. Well, in, in in my case, the the hardest thing was to actually get uh, the African thing right. Yeah. Because you know all the percussion stuff we've recorded here in Bulgaria, but everything and some woodwind solos as well. But everything above that, I was like, you know, I bought a uh, West West African kora. That's like a mm. harp instrument made of uh, I don't know. Uh, Pumpkin or something <laughs> like this. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a really nice instrument, and looked kind of simple mm -hmm. to play on it. It's not simple. <laughs> it's Is that with all absolute, instruments? <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely not simple. So we tried, you know, the guitarist that I work with, and he tried to play it, and it was it wasn't it wasn't working out. <laughs> so, and I think I mentioned this when uh, when we did the the stream for the release of the game. But back at that time, I, I also watched um, a show called The Widow. It's on uh, Amazon Prime. 
don't ask me. I'm maybe like one, two, two persons that yeah. own Amazon Prime here in Bulgaria. <laughs> but uh, yeah, somehow I, I watched it, and mainly because of the music. And mm. the music is was written by a very good friend of mine, Dominic Scherer. He's a British mm. television series composer. Yeah, and he went to South Africa to record the score. Yeah, and that was pre-pandemic, I think, or during the pandemic. So, around that period of time and to me it, it sounds really as an amazing experience and so I, I called him and I said mm -hmm. okay Dom tell me where did you record this and he was like oh I have this fantastic group of musicians and at that time uh, I was going to Prague with Brad mm -hmm. to record the brass there so I was like okay let's this uh, let, let's get in touch with those guys and um, so I asked them to. I basically asked them to record some folklore songs, which later I uh, I would arrange mm -hmm. for the game. That that that's what what started. Oh, the, just the vocal stuff. And while we were re recording the brass for the orchestral stuff, I received like a video of <laughs> of the the boys and the girls singing into like this. Is small that the one that made it into the? Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so you're gonna see that one with the. Yeah, we can trailer. we can play it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and. Actually, you want to play it now? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I think that's the. It's the second one. Uh, uh, yeah, the, this, this one. one. Yes, this one. Mm -hmm. You can put us on the lower side, Lumo. We got no sound. Corander is mentioning in the. Very faint.
what's interesting is that now that I've that I've seen it on the inside, I know that where it is on the outside, and I've passed by this you know building so many times. Yeah. Like you can't guess, yeah, like <laughs> that, it, yeah. that something like this happens in, in that building, and yet, yeah, it's it's. It's great to hear and so to see. This is like the, the shots of the of the singers, amazing singers, by the way. Mm. That was something that I received on my iPhone, and I was just literally we just landed. Mm -hmm. So I opened my, you know, uh, turn off the air yeah. airplane yeah. mode, and that was the first thing I received. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Let let me check it. Oh, <laughs> holy, that's amazing, you know. Yeah. So uh, and I immediately kind of started thinking and I had like a session in an hour mm. <laughs> with the brass and I was like I don't care about the brass <laughs> now <laughs> I, I really want to write something to, to that performance because that's uh, yeah I think uh, performance is something that really mattered mm. and this is something that we discussed with with uh, Brad Loxton that um, very often that um, video games nowadays and also film music, especially film music, because um, things over there is very produced heavily, overproduced mm. hybrid scores and so forth. Yeah. Uh, and kind of people stopped uh, paying attention to an actual performance. And you know, when you when you see and hear mm. people, you know, just uh, playing like this and singing like this, it's a completely different thing. Mm -hmm. I mean. I could possibly make this with virtual instruments, mm -hmm. yeah. just the choir and just play it with samples and stuff, mm -hmm. and it, it will sound okay, it will sound great. But, you know, the, the orchestra listening to the yeah. singers and reacting to, to what they sing, even, even even though they don't know what, what's mm -hmm. inside the lyrics, that's, that makes it super special. Yeah, but plus it, it, that approach that you said, like stitching together a lot of different elements and doing it manually, not, not as a performance, yeah is more like even more futuristic like it fits more in that uh, yep. context while if you're walking around Grand Chien you know and, and Jagged Alliance more like you can imagine those those singers yeah, somewhere working somewhere in the yeah. background and singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh but you actually shared an interesting uh, story with the um, the miners track uh -huh. the, <laughs> that yeah. there that you actually started out just drafting it and you know b yeah. even before you met the musicians and it actually turned out quite well <laughs> yeah that there's a track it's called uh, working in the in in the mines and it's um it's like this African based uh you know track with all those guitars and ethnic instruments mm. so very um, percussion heavy mm -hmm. you know um and uh with, with the like that there's this um, it's called a talking drum so mm -hmm. they play the drum and they uh, they, they can squeeze the drum and it makes uh -huh. like doo -doo 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 -doo. so it's like doo -doo 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 -doo. so it's kind of really this was performed here and before we went to you know to South Africa mm. I mean virtually went there uh, I was like let's test this out let's let's try this concept and see if it works so I made this track and I was like we need vocals mm -hmm. for this one and but obviously we have First of all, we have no lyrics, we have no singers. <laughs> so I made some gibberish lyrics and I s sang them myself. And it's actually in the game. It's like complete gibberish. So, uh, but it fits. It? Yeah, but it, it works. Yeah, <laughs> it it, it works. sounds kind of authentic. <laughs> <laughs> what was yeah. it? If it's stupid and it works, yeah. it's not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there was also, oh, oh, this is, we won't probably get too much in the details, but there was also a, a a situation where we figured out lyrics oh, matter oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> because um, later on in the development we had this uh, sanity check you would call it yeah. like hey guys we have all this music and it's recorded <laughs> in a language that we don't understand how about we check what what they're singing about yeah. So all of a sudden, one of those tracks was like a heavy no, <laughs> because we didn't know what, what it was about. When we figured it out, I was like, okay, this is wildly inappropriate. We're yeah. we're gonna have to scrap that one. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> this might be an Easter egg for someone, you know, to yeah. <laughs> to figure out. But we're not gonna. Yeah, go, there was go one 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 track that just 
wasn't included in the game. It was a really nice performance, but uh, completely uh, inappropriate lyrics, <laughs> <laughs> I would say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, we actually had have a lot of like ideas dump. Lubo, can you scroll down to our uh, to our notes so that you know mm. we might not miss anything? Oh right, right. Uh, what was the first first game that you bought? That was like a very interesting connection <laughs> oh, okay. that we didn't make in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, but, that, that was a, that, that's a funny story. So, um, when I was still in school, mm. so I saved saved up some money, and back then it was very popular to have like these. Uh, Video game ca- cafes or they were yeah, not like cafes like clubs. Clubs, yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we go, call them. We you call pay them by the hour just to play yeah. games on actual PCs that you didn't own at home. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we had some sort of a like a okay PC at home. Mm. Uh, my, my mother was working on it, and one day I was like, "Can I maybe buy a video game mm. and maybe I don't know install it on this computer?" And she was like, "Okay, if it's one game, sure." And I was like, "Okay, perfect." And but then she said you have to save up some money to buy it because I'm not buying you any games, you know. And I was like, oh, okay. So I saved up some money, mm-hmm. which for me was like a, a big amount, like a big chunk of money. And at that time, the first Bulgarian game, Tsar, developed by Hemimon Games, yeah, uh, came out. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I really want to buy this game. And. So I went to, uh, there was like, my mother was meeting like a very good friend of hers and uh, the son of my mother's friend, who's, I don't know, at that time he was like 30 or something. He was there and I was, oh, I really want to buy this game. And he said, oh, really? Okay. Uh, I have like a hardware store. I, I buy repair computers and sell parts and so forth. I can I can sell the game because we also say, sell games. And I was like, oh, really? Okay, perfect. Well, here's my money. So <laughs> I gave it, he, he took it. He gave me a copy of Tsar. Uh, all branded up, yeah. looking great. So I went back home. I was like super happy. Then put the disc. Then there was like this folder called Crack. And I was like, okay, uh, what do I do with this? Then I called him because that was the first game. That, yeah, yeah, you know, you I, he like, know the first Well, game. when you buy a game because uh, it's encrypted and it's, <laughs> you have to put a special, you know, crack. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And then ten years later, <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, I figure out that the the son of my. Uh, mother's very good friend actually ripped me off. It's like you're, you're probably um, recording something, you know, being a composer and everything. Yeah. It's like, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That was the night. That was the nineties for you. Like yeah. everything was really weird and shady here. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> but yeah. Um, tell me, like. What what are your favorite uh, scores, like game scores? Uh, I I still to this day I love telling the story, but but we went to a, uh, to a pub quiz like with video game, mm. as a video games as a topic. So we go, we went to a pub quiz, you know, you're having a beer, they're asking some questions, you're you're in teams, it's it's a lot of fun. And there's a round on music. I never thought that I actually because I don't pay attention to music. Like I don't mm. intentionally plan on listening and you know, understanding like, oh, this is that track yeah. from something. And then like after the round ended and I like had five out of seven seven because you know, when when the track starts and you're like Hey, that's from I don't know uh, World of Warcraft, or yeah. that's from, and you just click to it. You don't know the the the, the name of the actual track, but you don't care. <laughs> it's like that's sure. thank you. That's yeah. memories yeah, yeah, yeah. that go that, into that, it. That's the most amazing thing I, <laughs> any composer wants to hear. <laughs> but composers are starting to be more, more and more actually recognized. Like it, it's not only Hans Zimmer is doing the. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And there, there's some really cool composers out there and um, mm. uh, favorite game soundtracks I have to start with uh, m- maybe the, the first game that made a very big like impression on me was uh, there were like two games mm. same developer so it was kind of at the same time I played them kind of at the same time so Warcraft mm-hmm. Warcraft 2 and uh, Starcraft the, the original one not 2 uh, yeah the original one 
Yeah, so um, StarCraft and especially Brood War, I mostly played with Terran, so I mm -hmm. really know the Terran music by heart, basically, and that, that made a huge impression. And afterwards, um, you know, Heroes of Might and Magic, Baldur's Gate 2, that's... Uh, I'm a huge fantasy nerd, so that, like, this Dungeons and Dragons... For uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that was, like, uh, amazing for me. From, from, the, from the new games, I absolutely love uh, Gareth Coker and everything he does, you know. Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, for mm. example, fantastic soundtrack. Um, he also worked on the on the he Halo series, mm. which is also amazing. Uh, speaking of Halo, I would say Marty O'Donnell and Michael Salvatore's soundtrack to Mid to Soul Blighter. That was a very kind of old game. Have you played it? Mid, no. Mid to it's. Oh yeah. Have you, you've played it. Yeah. A very hard game. <laughs> yeah. This is maybe one of the hardest games I've I've ever played. I mean, it's, it's it's like a strategy, so mm -hmm. you need to go through a, like a mission with a but with a specific number mm -hmm. of units. Uh, and there is like I, I started playing on the legendary mode, so you have like five knights, You're one like, dwarf. This is very easy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> one dwarf who throws like uh, mortars or something, and two bow bowmans, you know. And then you you get like three hundred zombies <laughs> coming at you, and you have to figure it out somehow. That's the first level, <laughs> you know. So and the music there was was amazing. And when you die a hundred times, you kind of <laughs> remember the music. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to remember. Yeah, you have to. Uh, then um, also Horizon, the new Horizon, he has a fantastic sound. God of War, God of War. Bear McCreary is great. Yeah, Bear McCreary. Mm -hmm. When it came out, I was like, oh, that's that's amazing, uh, you know, and all that. Uh, low choirs. I'm a huge yeah. fan of choir. Uh, my, I have a master's degree in choral conducting. Okay. So when I when I heard ta ti ta, so he's not only pretending and, oh, on the video. Okay. He actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm pretending. <laughs> I'm pretending. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what else? There are so many games and so many great soundtracks. One I thing. I have a very interesting question about. Yes. Have you heard? Uh, I think it was from a French composer, but it was for one of the only the dark games. Olivier Derville. Yeah. Yes, you have, the, yeah, uh, yeah you, ethnic, you know what I'm going to ask. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know what I'm going to ask because it has a very strong Bulgarian connection. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it was one of the soundtracks I actually, um, way back in the, the day, I actually pirated that, <laughs> that soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. And I still from time to time listen to that soundtrack because it was, yeah. it was so weird because it had this uh, Bulgarian folklore music. And, and at the same time, it was very interesting. Uh, the orchestration was amazing, and yep. yeah, it was so epic. That was the uh, mystery of the Bulgarian voices. That's yeah. it, like yeah. an ensemble, yeah. if you, in case yeah. you don't know it. Um, and uh, the Bulgarian, we have this ethnic singing that's very nasal and very, you know, like this. <laughs> that's a poor imitation. <laughs> it's actually pretty cool, and You're it's a composer. very strong. You're not a yeah, yeah. singer. So. <laughs> yeah, not a singer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And the, also the cool thing about ethnic choirs is that the Bulgarian ethnic choir can pierce through anything, yeah. like musically. I mean, uh, there's if uh, there's a soundtrack that we recorded here in Sofia, uh, the solo Star Wars story, mm. and there's like this track called Maroders, Maroders Arrive. Uh, when they're doing the train heist and then mm. the Maroders arrive at the end. And there's the ethnic Choir and they're singing like da 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 da, and there's like a full orchestra mm. blasting, and you can still hear it. And again, I had the same impression from yeah. Olivier. He's yeah. a yeah, he's a fantastic composer, especially when it comes to also uh, adaptive music as well. Mm. He's very good at this. Yeah, the other uh, actually uh, Bulgarian uh, lead in the soundtrack was very weird as well. In uh, do you know about that story? It's from a game called uh, Beyond Good and Evil. It was originally no, I've produced heard the from, name, but I don't know. Uh, from, by Ubisoft, and it's an adventure game. And suddenly, in one of the tracks, there is a, a Bulgarian speech at the beginning because <laughs> the composer, <laughs> his girlfriend, was <laughs> Bulgarian. But <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, it was called uh, the priest was called Propaganda. It's an also very good soundtrack. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, I, I, I yeah. don't know this. Sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of suggestions in chat. The blasphemous soundtrack. Um, in the 80s and 90s, computer composers were also kind of celebrities like uh, Rob Hubert. I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly the, the names, but uh, 
going through. Could this clues back if I pronounce it pro- probably? Uh, Jerwin Tell and Ben Daglish. Mm-hmm. Um, Honestly, I before years ago, I didn't uh, pay attention too much on the actual people that are producing mm-hmm. the music because then, you know, you went through the credits and were like, uh, yeah. okay, this is a wall of text. I'm not going to read <laughs> all of this. <laughs> But nowadays, when you see a lot of the behind the scenes, like the video that we're, yeah. we're launching tomorrow, you actually gain appreciation of like what's what it's like to do that. Yeah, because, oh, and, because video games, you know, compared to films, because I work with mm-hmm. films a lot and films... Even though, even even if they have the worst on-set sound mm-hmm. engineer of all time, they still have some sort of a sound that that is kind of part of what the story is about. Yeah. I mean, they're on a on a public square, and you can still hear birds and stuff like this. So there is some sort of an amb- ambience. While in the game, there's nothing. Mm-hmm. So props to the sound team. They, uh, you know, in in this case, they have to create this whole. You know, atmosphere. Yeah. And music also needs, I think, to make this atmos- atmosphere believable. Mm-hmm. Um, and in order to do to do that, you need to put a lot of thought into it. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's that's a totally different thing that we we yeah. we decided in the beginning of the the conversation yeah. that we're not going to touch because <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like it, actually attaching to all of the specific moments is a a different art on its own. Maybe we'll have Mart or I think Mart is, was the main main person that actually attached it so we can talk a little bit more about him on a future stream. But uh now let's focus on the music itself but also like you know that in in certain situations like the music is the thing that actually cues you to something. The best example is like Doom. You're walking around and all of a sudden, you know, the Doom music kicks Doom. in. It's a meme. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, you know that you're going to have a fight or even a boss fight just by, you know, that track starts playing and and you know what's yeah. up. So And M- Mick Gordon is absolutely great. And this is very, this is very nerdy. But if you open... Do you know where you okay. are? <laughs> okay, yeah. Come on. Okay. So when you open some of the tracks from Doom, But you open them in like a music editing software, okay, uh, and you look at the spectrogram, yeah. and then you start seeing like pentagrams and like <laughs> three sixes, <laughs> yeah, and this is like frequencies that you don't hear. So yeah. th- this is purely for you know the fun of it, yeah. you know. But still, you know, that is, yeah, yeah. But that, that's like the Easter eggs that you want to put yeah, in yeah. there, you know. Just, yeah. just. There, the there was an Easter egg, an Easter egg uh, in, uh, in Victor Vran. The, mm. There was like this level w- where we made uh, the music for like skeletons dancing on uh, Gangnam Style. So we made Gangnam <laughs> yeah, Style yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with instruments of <laughs> from the game. Um, Not officially. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, I uh, had a question about uh, something that uh, seems very interesting to me. Have you thought about, uh, you know, um, a way of integrating teams uh, based on uh, what's happening in the game. So, for example, uh, meshing different teams so that at uh, a high intensity moment at a certain team plays and then, yeah, but uh, based on the player's uh, gameplay and not uh, like we do it in a predefined way. Yeah. Well, in order to do this, first of all, we need to have some sort of an engine. Yeah, uh, which would be able to handle stuff like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Then <laughs> you can do ad- adaptive music, which um, simply, v- very simply put, can be, uh, you know, like vertical mm-hmm. and horizontal. So uh, vertical, you have different elements, different themes. Uh, so you start losing some elements, start adding up, you know, and, and uh, horizontal would be I don't know, you have like different stages of a boss fight. So you have like yeah. A section, then you have a transition, B section, and so forth yeah. and so forth. Um, I, without getting too phil- philosophical, <laughs> I am not uh, 100% fan of this approach okay. with mm-hmm. games. Uh, the reason for that is uh, purely ego, ego-driven. Because yeah. uh, I think that at that, at that point gamers s- start perceiving the music on a different uh, different way because oh, if, if understand that, yeah, yeah if you're playing uh, f- 
Elden Ring, for example, I'm playing Elden Ring, so I'm staying on the first stage for like 20 minutes, and I'm hearing the same kind yeah, of loop yeah, yeah. over and over. When I hear, the, I, I lose uh, perception of how the track is developing as a, like a musical performance, mm -hmm, so, so mm -hmm. to speak. And if I if, if I play Diablo, yeah. two or three or four, you know, um, I know. Maybe Diablo 4 was not a good example in 3, but uh, Diablo 2. So I'm playing Diablo 2. I'm going into Tristan and I hear the music. Yeah. And I know it. I know yeah, it. Yeah. And if, even if I hear it outside of the game, I can understand yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah. And Uncharted, again, I'm, I love Uncharted, the Uncharted games. And I also love the scores. And I, I actually started backwards, so I played the, the third one going back mm. and uh the music there is awesome but then you get stuck on something that you need to do and then you go like 30 minutes in yeah 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 so uh yeah too much yeah yeah i think it was very interesting it uh got me started thinking was i don't know if you played it was a small but very beautiful game called gris yeah and uh they did some cheating there because they uh could actually uh, mark some moments in the game with the music and make them in sync. So it's not procedurally hmm. generated, kind hmm. of. But uh, they did uh, attempt this and it was very interesting because uh, the game is very emotional and uh, they did it in a very tactful way. Yeah. Without being, you know, it was, uh, I think, with the right amount at, at the certain times, you know, yeah, we definitely need iconic teams like the Tristan team and yeah. so on. But uh, at certain points, at I think certain it, points, yeah, yeah, it can be very interesting yeah. for me. And as a mm. designer, this is something I'm and, and also really there's, interested. there's something else that, for example, Jagged Alliance has three hours and a half or something of music. And if if we do do it yeah. like this, then it becomes more. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, obviously. it will be a bit different every time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and There's especially if it's music, yeah. yeah, so it uh, it can further amplify the amount of content that you have. Yeah, yeah. my personal favorite is Mass Effect. Like I think two and three maybe. Three, three is amazing. Two, yeah. uh, one is it's okay, but they really developed like with two yeah. and with three. Like even with with the when you move into the cinematic moments, that's like you're watching a movie and yeah. the the music is just spot on like i don't know yeah, and video games pose a lot of challenges to music because um mm -hmm. you can uh, usually enter an exit location multiple times and if the music starts from the beginning every time you start yeah. to get overly familiar with the beginning <laughs> yeah, that's of right. the team that's <laughs> right. yeah that's so right. it's uh, it's a very challenging field yeah. and i'm really interested in uh, you know your thoughts about how uh how these challenges how uh, can you work around these challenges? Yeah, I think you can. And uh, another another great soundtrack that came out recently was the uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you know, uh, it was made by Gordy Hub and Stephen Barton. So both of those guys, they had to write music in the style of John Williams, which is, you know, something that I wouldn't challenge. agree on. That's yeah. a challenge. That's a challenge. <laughs> and, and I think that they, they nailed it. But also the amount of you know work that gets on a on this adaptive level and and you have to compose something like john williams who writes on paper so it's a, it's a completely different uh, um, you know style of working mm. you know workflow completely different workflow and then you have to adapt it to nowadays nowadays technology and record it in such a way that yeah. would give you the freedom to it's really cool. Mm. Yeah. By the way, yeah, Pine Duke, it's it's uh, raining. I think it's even current cold. here. Yeah. Yeah. So what you hear is rain. Yeah. Uh, there are some uh, soundproofing here, but not enough for what's what's going, <laughs> what's on. going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yeah, uh, someone mentioned Soul Reaver. Uh, I think that the last Legacy of Kane, the Defiance one, also had a really good score. I can barely remember it right now, but I remember how it made me feel. I was like, come on. I fit. think they did something clever there because the game was uh, kind of split into between the two characters and yes. I think they had different they teams. They had different teams, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, and the whole team uh, 
feel of the game was different between mm. the two characters, so that they could uh, explore that. No, but you can you can never have those two characters like have a, a same yeah. theme. They they were two yeah, really yeah, yeah. And the worlds game was apart. Built, was built on that, mm. and I think that was a very interesting uh, thing they did, and uh, could do with the music as well because this gives you amazing opportunities to develop yeah. the characters through the music as well. And and also like Baldur's Gate three and I think Divinity as well. I mean, if you're playing a bard, you can change the instrument, yeah, so it changes. Like, it's like the, the same theme, theme but yeah, yeah, yeah that's, with that was great. So that's that's a cool idea. I, I when I started, I just, it was just tweaking around, and, yeah. and then I found out. So like, wow, this is <laughs> yeah. this is very neat. <laughs> Another thing I'm very interested about: how do you think? Uh, how prominent do you think uh, uh, music in the game should be? Because we had this discussion hmm. a long, long time ago, especially with Tropical when. Because at the time things were uh, such that we had to buy stock uh, uh, songs for uh, the soundtrack, and uh, there was this discussion: how prominent should the song be? Should it? Mm. Uh, is there a risk of it diverting uh, attention from the gameplay? And I'm really interested. What do you think about that? Well, I don't think I'm the right person to ask. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a, a perfect a designer yeah, well. asking, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because obviously for me, music will be very. Oh, always uh, central central and it actually drives me to to make it central to, uh, and, and to be more involved in the game mm -hmm. so uh, I don't know the exact name of the track but uh, this is just the first thing that came to my mm -hmm. mind so Unreal Tournament very old game and there was like this track whenever it plays out I'm like okay now we're gonna <laughs> shoot something so uh, for me two music towers? yeah two, two <laughs> towers yeah two towers map yeah, yeah and that's the um, for me you know music kind of pushes me up to to do to do more and to be mm. more more part of the game uh, but that's I think due to the fact that I love music I constantly listen mm. to music all day long so I don't know yeah. Yeah, yeah, but uh, they have were some experiments. I think in uh, that a lot of most of the soundtrack was actual songs, and it was written as actual songs. Mm. And uh, PA did a lot of this with uh, their sports games and their uh, dancing games as well. They yeah. had like actual commissions. Uh, no, they were licensed. <laughs> licensed. Yeah. Yeah. This is one one example. When you just said red alert, that's not something that would pop into my head like uninvited. But when you said it. I just yeah. heard the song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <was> like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, do you think? Uh, what do you think of this approach in uh, having uh, the soundtrack built around songs rather than uh, themes and uh, moments? Yeah. Uh, it depends. I mean, if it's, um, I don't know, if you if you're playing like a noir detective story game and you have some sort. The jazzy songs at the background it kind of uh, adds up to the whole thing but if, if for example you're playing GTA and then you're listening to random radios for example that's GTA you know radio. maybe a bit for me I've always turned it down however if you're playing uh, cyberpunk you know I think the whole concept of the radio is more interwoven with the with the mm -hmm. story Again, it's the same thing essentially, yeah. but since it's kind of in the future and the, the music that's being played there is also kind of uh, something new, something but, unique. But Cyberpunk also had like during combat, also didn't, yeah, it different had a game. different. So there's uh, yeah. tons yeah. of content. So it kind of really depends, I think. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very weird because I can't stop associating certain songs with, uh, let's say, Did for Speed Underground. Yeah. Because yeah. I, yeah, and <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know that when a certain song, like, I like my concentration. I got into the version. I yeah. I play better. Like if you hear it, it on the like, I I have some songs exactly from Need for Speed on the ground that when they play, the first thing I visualize is the main screen. Yeah, like because yeah, yeah. a random song from that playlist would uh, would start Same when with you start uh, the, the game. The Fat Boy, the Fat Boy's um, uh, Slim song from uh, from FIFA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. The funk's so right. Right about yeah. now. <laughs> That's like the, the menu. The menu. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what the guys. I, I love actually the World of Warcraft um, one, the original one. I had so many hours trying to connect to a server, so I know that like painfully. <laughs> 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 but yeah, the, the whole world actually popped with, with uh, the soundtrack there. Um, what else? 
Uh, Eamon Tobin, I don't know who that is, but yep. mm-hmm. you know, uh, probably you're the one that yeah. <laughs> who can name drop a yeah. lot of those. Uh, Risk of Rain, I don't know that one. Maybe that's... Uh, mm. I've heard about it, but I haven't played it. Uh, uh, for YouTubers and streamers, if the music isn't original. Yeah, that's... Uh, Especially nowadays with all the content ID that basically yeah. um, we had algorithms that the track if you play yeah, a search, song. Yeah, music. Actually, that's that that was a conversation that we had. Hey, maybe we should uh, yeah. when we were talking about some of these stuff. Maybe you should play a <laughs> song in the background. And Joro Jor was like, No, you should. <laughs> no, <laughs> no maybe. that will not uh, go yeah. well when you upload we can the video. It. We can hum it, but <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. probably not. Especially Disney. No Disney. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what else? Hotline Miami. I don't, I don't know that one. Um, Divinity always the, the second Divinity is yeah <laughs> one of one of the the best ones in my opinion and uh, one of my favorite soundtracks of uh, of Bobby Borislav mm-hmm. is Knights of Honor that's uh, I think his first soundtrack I actually spent a lot of time in Knights the first Knights of Honor yeah the first Knights um, of Honor it's an amazing soundtrack the second was, one is is great as well uh, but so it was so ambient it, like it, you you've really felt yeah. on yeah, yeah. on that map yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a way. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. There's actually Chad is very active in what what their favorite uh, favorite is. Awesome guys. Well, gamers uh, love talking about games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so true. surprising. So. <laughs> One soundtrack that I absolutely love was is the um, um, how to pr- how to pronounce the, the name. It's uh, Floex. The Samorost soundtrack. Have you have you played no. Samorost? I have played Samorost, the... and uh, I think it was uh, the game was also kind of based around music and uh, mm-hmm. sounds. Yeah, and it's very yeah. unique, and and also Journey, Journey by Austin mm-hmm. Wintery, also am- amazing music. I I honestly don't know what the idea of the game is because <laughs> I've I've played it a lot. It's yeah. so soothing and relaxing. You know, you can play and enjoy. I don't know if it has an end game <laughs> or something. <laughs> it's just like really nice there's, music. There's actually a, yeah. a game that you would probably like that's based like music is front and center. You basically upload an MP3 file and it's a racing game that builds a track like with spaceships or whatever. Oh, okay. Builds a track based on, you know, the oh, actual flow of, of the music. Yeah. I don't remember what that was called, but it's it's maybe someone in chat knows. But yeah. Uh, that was weird. I don't know why I misplaced that one, but still. So anyway, like the famous question, what would you want to do if you had a top number one thing that you want to do in terms of game music uh, what would that be that's an, that's an easy answer uh, for me uh, absolutely absolute like vanilla fantasy even generic vanilla fantasy soundtrack with epic choirs french horns brass strings think of like lord of the rings is that like childhood dream or uh, abs- did, did it develop with with the it's years it's like uh, all my life dream <laughs> yeah so yeah my favorite, one of my favorite scores of all time is like the Road of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, especially. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I've always wanted to, to do something like this. Nice. And I have to ask, I know it's an uh, uh, evil question, but I have to ask it. What do you prefer, <laughs> uh, composing for games or for films? Oh, should the answer be ego, <laughs> ego driven or professionally driven? You can uh, give us both. Okay. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Have fun. Uh, yeah. I think the answer to both is games. Mm-hmm. Ego driven uh, because there's people people that actually care about the music, mm-hmm. and this was actually also very astonishing for me because with with films, especially nowadays, people are not that interested in film music. Mm-hmm. Like so, twenty years ago. Uh, I don't know, there was like an album coming out of the new Star Wars soundtrack and everybody would go and pick up the, you know, everybody yeah. like <laughs> nerds like myself. But you would go pick up the, the CD, uh, buy like vinyl or something. Mm. There was I had like this cassette of Braveheart, an amazing soundtrack, uh, also a huge favorite of mine. And nowadays it's not like this. You know, people don't care that much about 
maybe film music has become kind of bland, I would mm. say. And uh, with games, you know, when I released the Victor Van soundtrack on, on Spotify, there were like people listening to it and sending me messages and saying, oh, that's amazing. Thank you for making this music. And I was like, oh, that's yeah, that's awesome. That's actually awesome. Because otherwise, you know, I've, I've stood in my studio with no windows, uh, I can I can I couldn't even hear the rain. I I can't hear the rain in my suit. So soundproof, no windows, no air. So literally like a coffin, <laughs> coffin with speakers. Yeah. So <laughs> so hear I'm, the music. Yeah. So I'm I'm sitting there for like two months creating some sort of a soundtrack, and then maybe two people listen to it. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Yeah, but with yeah. with uh, things like Spotify and being able to upload all of the tracks there, you can actually see how many people watched it uh, and like, yeah, listen to it. So. That's right, but with films... Yeah. 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 Like royalty uh, report number five. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. But with games, it's, it's not like this. With, with games, I've had so many uh, amazing experiences, also with, with Jagged and Lions as well. And the second, the, the second reason is that I think with games, uh, game developers are more, even, even within like triple A games that they're very uh, industry driven. So mm -hmm, it's, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people make it's like, like a, it's a committee decision. Yeah, it's a committee decision, but still you get more creative freedom mm -hmm. to do what you want to do. Mm. And a score like, I don't know, Surviving Mars would have never been done in a movie mm -hmm. soundtrack nowadays because, you know, you, you get all those, um, you know, directors and producers, they use temp tracks and they want to, they basically say, we want something like this. Mm -hmm. And especially here with Game on Games, I've never had this, this talk, this discussion. I have, here's the game, here's how it looks like. We have a vague idea of where we want to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's it's up to you to present some sort of a creative choice, which is amazing. Because otherwise, yeah. I get time from inception, mm. and this is like the last 15 years of my life. Every TV show, everything that's like drama driven, you get time from inception. I absolutely hate this track now. <laughs> you know, Hans, Hans Zimmer did a great job at writing it, but and, it should and, never and, have been listened to that much. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, okay, maybe we can try something else in that scene no we want something like this that's it okay, okay. so yeah this is the answer to uh yeah. i think so video games rule yeah. awesome as a let's, let's try and go through through chats yeah. before we wrap up uh thanks pine duke audio surface the is the game that i was <laughs> telling you about maybe yeah. i can i can send you a link later on uh is the jagged alliance free soundtrack going to be released somewhere you have it if you own the game i think you also own the soundtrack in uh in steam or it's an additional one it's i'm a, not it's sure additional. it's yeah, an additional one but also you have it on, on spotify, spotify. So and i think that that's spotify, one spotify apple music youtube music and i think that's an ex not extended one but it's also the way that well, it's in the game, it's it's in a different format, so there's also more more. No, it's it's kind of the same. It's kind of it's the same. Kind of okay. same. So uh, the, the the Steam mm -hmm. um, release has three hours and a half, and the Spotify also has three hours and a half. Awesome, awesome. Okay, yeah, but like, with the with the Steam version, you get like lossless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I got an Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> music CD. <laughs> hey, as long as you don't have the uh, what was the guy from Baywatch? Um, uh, then yeah, <laughs> the, the Hasselhoff. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> CD, that's that's fine. Um, why there was a there was a track <laughs> there was a question about why don't we just release the Jagged Lines to uh, a soundtrack because that one's already made. Like you, you can al always play it, but mm. uh, it's a new game and we wanted to place it in, first of all in different location. It's the same mm. characters moved. With, with some years and the situation is different so it called for a different soundtrack honestly so we couldn't just you know paste the mm. or reimagine the, the old one so yeah uh, what else what kind of new music ideas you got for expansion pack we can neither confirm nor deny any expansion <laughs> packs at this moment <laughs> Jagged Alliance 3 OST sounds like uh, a very coherent continuation of Jagged Alliance 2 OST Actually, that was we didn't want to do the same thing, but the Jagged Alliance 2 soundtrack was a starting point. Yeah. Like we wanted it to feel in the same world and you know fit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if if I may 
there were a bit of a backstory. Yeah. So when we first started working, that was at the early stages of the of the project. So I was listening to the to the Jagged Alliance two soundtrack, and I was like, okay, so we have to use maybe the marimba, you mm-hmm. know, just choose some of the instruments, and um, but let's let's go into a different direction and also. Obviously, recording all those beautiful, you know, wonderful musicians uh, is some, something that costs a lot, especially on uh, two continents, especially. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, at first, we decided to try a more contemporary approach. Think of, uh, I don't know, action scores, but not from the 90s or 80s, not like Die Hard, but more like the Bourne. Uh, series so more synths so you get like and mm-hmm. you know all synthesizer stuff and so there were some really cool tracks that uh, came out of this but it wasn't Jagged Alliance yeah and this is a talk that we had with uh, Brad and with uh, Buyan that uh, I mean it's the music is okay but it's not Jagged Alliance and yeah. I was like okay so we need to find a way to record it old school way. So everything performed by by the by the musicians, and that that's what I think makes the difference. Yeah. Uh, oh, Hazard, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, we are gonna upload it on YouTube, and there's an option with the closed captions that should work fairly well for generating subtitles. Hopefully, they can understand Eastern European accents. <laughs> but yeah. Um, did the rejected vocals from the song you mentioned end up somewhere else? Uh, we didn't reject the vocals <clears throat> specifically. Uh, the song was amazing; like it, it sounded great. Yeah, Just but it's, the it's lyrics. Not in, yeah, it's not in the game. Yeah, yeah. there it, it's not there at all. Um, Here, play this mixing track. I wonder. How, yeah, we need to read these out for the. Um, Recording. Uh, I wonder how it would sound uh, to have a playlist mixing tracks from different games instead of only one game at a time. Maybe that's an idea. Uh, have you ever considered adding an in-game music player? I would also like to have a music de- uh, delay adjustment option. I think that you can upload, like with the modding tools, you can upload additional soundtrack in... Uh, not additional soundtrack, but additional sound yeah. files that, that you can have in the also game. Music. I think there there's one okay. mod with the uh, Jagged Class 2. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and also, I don't know if... I'm not sure where the, whether you can have a music delay in that, but if you, you do have, it's logical to be in the mod tools. Because the mod tools normally are just some of our tools that have been simplified, you know, for the modding community. Because yeah. there's a ton of stuff that probably no modder would ever need. In uh, you know making a mod, whereas in making the game. And the last question actually uh, popped up twice, uh, so we have to ask it. Uh, <laughs> do you plan a concert? Well, we are giving you a lot of uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of. Uh, <laughs> you, you've already composed a lot of music, so yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you do actually kind of have enough music for a concert. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I can. Yeah, maybe even two two concerts. I mean. If we only perform like the Jacket and Lion soundtrack, that would be like three hours and a half of a concert. You know, people will yeah. <laughs> probably fall asleep. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. I had, uh, recently I have seen a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, concerts uh, dedicated especially to video game music. So yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So it's something to bear in mind for the future. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, if, if I find some sort of a, I don't know what the word in English can I say it in Bulgarian? Yeah. Yeah, mecenat, you know, like, Mecen- a, yeah. like, an, um, uh, like an investor. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Somebody. No, uh, it's not an investor, but it's... Patron, maybe. Patron. Yeah, patron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a... Like, like a, a patron. Like a baroness. Or yeah. <laughs> so send this recording to the rich people you know <laughs> yeah. so that we can make this happen. <laughs> yeah. All right. I think that we can wrap it up. Uh, Thanks a lot, guys. It was an awesome conversation. Thanks, George, for no, joining thank us. You. Thank you. And I think that um, if 
if there's a lot of more questions, we can even have you along uh, for another time. It's cool that you're in Sofia, Absolutely. so that yeah, yeah. we don't have to make uh, remote connections and have yeah. connection issues and just you know be able yeah. to talk in front of these really glaring lights because you can yeah. see us. As, as long as, as it did, did doesn't rain, so it's <laughs> like today. <the day. laughs> I don't think it's that yeah. much of a big deal. And tomorrow when I'm editing this, I'm gonna go like holy. You know, <laughs> this is <laughs> so loud. <coughs> But hopefully, Lou can help me out. <laughs> help me out with clearing that up. Uh, yeah, and uh, hopefully soon we will have snow, and it, it isn't that ah, loud. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> snow is yeah, even more soundproofing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. Um, we're Thank gonna go, we're gonna take a short break while we clear up things for uh, Lou's happy little accidents playthrough, and Pavel, the other Pavel, is on, also going to join him. For it, so yeah. stay tuned for that, and we'll I see you next time. can only assume there will be a lot of crawling and a lot of madness. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Bye. Thank Peace. you. Bye.